Hello and welcome to another episode of the Federal Church Presents Better Than Bloomberg. Covering the uh, global financial collapse 2023. You're gonna be poor because you didn't donate and you didn't pay your tithes. The worst collapse ever. That's not an exaggeration either. Oh, and I brought some, uh, brought a little slice of humble pie for the viewers there that like to uh, shadow ban my stuff and uh, not pay me for my uh, intellectual property. Now. Oh, oh my God, that humble pie tastes good. Let me try it again. It's time a little side of bank failure. Oh. Oh my god, that humble pie is so epic. How are you? Something closer to making sense. Oh, not exactly. Oh, wait, let's try that humble pie again. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That definitely tastes like banking collapse to me. Banking system failure. But here's another, uh, here's another good note from, uh, from zero hedge here. Oh, and I only brought the uh, the humble pie because there were um, there were some degenerates degenerates who have uh, no concept of what uh, basically people who run the global economy do. Talking about talking about resumes. Their little farce here. Oh yeah, here's your resume. Oh yeah, there, there's some bank failure. Oh yeah. We're going over the uh, the global dipshittery here. Here is a good note from Zero Hedge. Fed balance sheet surges by another hundred billion amid bank runs as foreign repos soar by record and cash floods into reverse repo, reverse repo facility, and money markets. Again, which is even funnier because I think these people don't know what money market accounts are. I mean, you can excuse some people for not knowing what, you know, bond duration is, right? Because they're likely just equity animals, and they're not supposed to know that. But, when you're a depositor, and you put your money into something, you should probably know what it is. And people were talking about moral hazard, right? But it wasn't just in the, con uh, in the context of the bank failures. It wasn't just moral hazard in the sense that the people who are running the bank were engaging any risky activities because they weren't. Also, you know, usually when people have this perception, they think of a bank that is also an investment bank. You know, something like a JP Morgan, something like a Goldman Sachs, you know, one of these huge investment banks who also have a trading arm, an investment bank, and a commercial bank. That you know you got rid of, you got rid of the, uh, you, you got rid of the divisions there, or I guess spinoffs, because of Glass Steagall, and they would bring Glass Steagall up. Glass Steagall has nothing to do with this. These are simple depository institutions. They're just the commercial banks, and not even a sophisticated commercial bank. They take people's deposits, and then they loan out money. And they do it in the form of some of the most plain vanilla instruments, such as U.S. Treasuries. And they have one very, very simple task, and that's it. And they manage to fuck that up because they're dipshits. And this uh, <laughs> this goes to the point where you know when when people put their money in these sorts of institutions, well. You should probably know what these institutions do. And when they talk about the moral hazard, it's no longer on the, uh, for example, the manager of the bank who did the textbook maneuver, even though it wasn't thinking, and said, oh, we're supposed to put our money in U.S. Treasuries because that's what's risk-free. And other places, too, you know, sometimes that's what's um, required. It's a, it's a regulatory requirement. But in this case these people were not taking tremendous risks. 
They were doing their one simple task, even though they weren't thinking about what they were doing. Not thinking things through. Dipshit. And it wasn't anything of greed or whatnot. It was just sheer, absolute incompetence. And now the moral hazard falls on the depositor. Because they should be knowing what their deposits are doing. They should be knowing exactly if the bank is solvent or not. And if it's not, you shouldn't be putting your money there. Nobody's saving it. Kind of like these managers who should not have been putting their money in the U.S. government. Who they know is extremely broke as shit. It is the brokest country in the history of the world. There has never been a larger debtor nation in the history of the world. To the tune of those trillions of dollars, not to mention their unfunded liabilities, which are even more trillions of dollars. It's actually several times over their debt amount. So now, when they talk about moral hazard, it's on the depositor who should not be depositing their money in any of these failed failed institutions because they know damn well that the, that the bank has no capital reserves. They have no money in it to pay them if they want their deposits back. So that is not the responsibility of anybody else to bail out. It's sheer stupidity. And it's, it, it's not even moral hazard if you think about it. There's no risk involved. They're guaranteed to lose their money. They're just sheer fucking idiots. But, back to the note here. Wait, let me get it a little bit more humble, but... Oh, yeah. The bank failure tastes amazing. The much-awaited release of the Fed's latest weekly balance sheet update was released at exactly 4.30 p.m. And again, here's more of their failures. Who don't think things through? And when they do stupid things like that, they do not understand why they get the consequences of their idiocy. And not surprisingly, it showed that in the past week, the bank bailout continued at that less toward pace. As of March 22, the Fed's balance sheet increased by $94.5 billion to $8.734 trillion from $8.639 trillion. Again, imagine these sums of money and the best way to do it. Because these people can't even count that high. This is how broke the U.S. government is. So if you thought it was a good idea to lend your money to these clowns, you're probably a goddamn idiot. Yeah, so this is what a, this is what a million dollars look like. A tiny little pile. There's a hundred million dollars, but a pallet full of cash. Now there's a billion dollars, that's a couple pallets. Now take a look at one trillion dollars. There's a billion, and here's where we are at a trillion. Now, how many trillion of those do you have? I think it's close to about 40 or 50 trillion. It's a million, million dollars. A thousand billion. It's a one followed by 12 zeros. And these pallets are double stacked. This area just occupies the side five acres. $100 with 100 bills stacked six feet in height. So the next time you hear someone toss around the phrase trillion dollars, that's what they're talking about. So again, that's just for illustrative purposes. So if you know that a country owes that much money and you're stupid enough to lend money to it, you deserve to not get your money back. Even if your excuse is, that's just what we've always done. Just like putting your money into a depository institution 
that you already know is insolvent. You deserve to not have your money. A fool and his money is easily parted. This is one of those examples. In total, the Fed's balance sheet has increased by almost $400 billion in the past two weeks, which is double the Lehman crisis value. And it's fast approaching its all-time high of $895 trillion a year. And quantitative tightening kicked in and shrank the Fed's assets by $600 billion. that Fed backstop facility borrowings were roughly flat around $164 billion. But the composition shifted as usage of the discount window dropped by $42 billion to $110 billion, which, however, was offset almost dollar for dollar by a $42.6 billion increase in the Fed's brand new bank term funding program for the garbage facility. Meanwhile, other credit extensions, consisting of Fed loans to bridge banks established by the FDIC to resolve SBB and Signature Bank, rose to $179.8 billion and $142.8 billion in the previous week. Now again, these are just the first banks to fail. The rest of them, damn near all of them, will fail as well. So those pallets of cash that you saw illustrated there, just imagine plenty more of those, multiples of this, to cover it. What's the dollar going to be worth? Nothing. It'll be a parody with the fucking peso. Of course, the above only accounted for just under $40 billion in reserves. What was the delta? The answer, a record $60 billion in foreign official repo. Because again, it's not just the United States that's failing. It's a global fucking banking crisis. Done by dipshit convention. is also the counterparty limit under the Fed's new FEMA repo facility. Which, you haven't looked at that yet. Which means that the offshore scramble for dollars was alive and well. And what that means is third worlders are even more fucked than they already were. Someone really needed access to US dollars. That someone is either likely Credit Suisse or UBS some special purpose vehicle of the Swiss National Bank. Of course, we can't know for sure since the names of counterparties are named. Confidential. And that just skyrocketed this year. The maxing out of the foreign repo is also why the Fed's U.S. dollar liquidity swaps only rose to a paltry $587 million in the past week. The real number to focus on is the massive amount of foreign repo usage. Again, global financial crisis. And you might just excuse it with Credit Suisse there or UBS, but I guarantee you it'll be far more banks in far more countries than they're even you know, mentioning now in the press. Because they're trying to lie to you to make you feel better about your complete and utter collapse. Hoping hoping that you being on the hopium would just believe everything is okay. And it's just like the other notes that I'd seen in the past too where they they, they were they, they still don't seem to understand the gravity of the situation. And they're still on the hopium. And you could tell them one simple thing. Put your money where your mouth is. Because you want to put your money there. Go ahead. Let's see if you ever get paid back. 
which is where the foreign U.S. dollar scarcity emerged this week. Meanwhile, oh wait, wait, that calls for another, another bit of the uh, humble pie there. Meanwhile, how quite the tightening still laughably taken probably in the background. Laughable because it was kind of pointless when you're printing trillions of dollars. The Fed's holdings of treasuries dropped by 3.5 billion to 7.93 trillion. The question is whether after emergency Fed facilities rose by another 100 billion. A rough proxy of how much deposit drain took place in the week. Again, they, they've pretty much gotten all of that out. This marks the peak for the credit crisis. Absolutely not. Especially that term, credit crisis. Because as these banks no longer have money to lend, because they no longer have deposits, and the capital was essentially gone to zero before that, they can't issue any debt can issue any credit. And as the banks start disappearing, start going under, there won't be a bank to issue any credit. And then it'll especially get worse when the big banks start to blow up from the derivatives exposures. And while that may have been true until yesterday, it is none other than Janet Yellen herself who sent bank stocks plunging in the past 48 hours. With her, it wasn't amateurish, it was reality comments. Can they backstop every deposit in the U.S.? $18 trillion worth? Fucking three quarters of the annual GDP of the U.S.? No, it's not possible for them to do. Unless, of course, they want to implode the dollar. Which, you know, if you think about it, they're already on, well on their way to doing it. In any case, this means that we will need to wait one more week until the next H40, H41 statement to see if various emergency fit facilities are declining or if they continue to rise and will eventually be replaced with permanent reserve facilities such as QE, similar to what happened after the 2008 financial crisis. And this is an even more laughable statement. I wonder who said, I, I know Zero Hedge wrote this, but I know he would say that without a reason. But th this is laughable. This is absurd. So, they're going to fix an inflationary crisis, which is what this is. This isn't a crisis of fraud or crisis of, um, you know, model risk where get exotic derivatives blew up. This is an inflationary crisis. That's all it is. And now they're going to print shitloads more money with QE. And no, they cannot cure it like the 2008 financial crisis doing that. Especially because this is much worse than the 2008 crisis. They all did this by convention. Or almost all of them. And even if they manage to hedge it, somebody has to pay the other side of that. So, this, this statement in itself, I guess he's just posing a situation here. Or what the usual, you know, shitheads over at the, uh, who don't know what they're doing, uh, are likely to say, I mean, it is a completely absurd scenario. Finally, while the Fed is flooding the system with emergency reserves, so yeah, I guess that's why he's saying, you know, you know, what he's talking about. Those wondering where these are going should look at the Fed's reverse repo facility, which is sort of, as well as money market funds, which have been scooping up cash recently fueled in large part by depositors pulling their money away from the U.S. banks. The amount of money parked at money market funds, which again, I don't think they understand what money market funds are yet, climbed to a fresh record in the week through March 22nd as banking concerns continued to rock global markets. According to data from the Investment Company Institute, about $117.4 billion poured into U.S. money market funds. And this is the funny part, too. They teach their idiot kids to be idiots, you know, as the dysgenic sort of idiocracy. You know, that you see in idiocracy. And then they're shocked that their kids are useless morons. And then they 
get what users want to get. In case the, uh, in case the microphone picked that up. Port into US money market funds in the week through March 22nd, bringing total assets up to an unprecedented 5.132 trillion versus the 5.1 trillion, 5.01 trillion the week to March 15th. Inflows over the past two weeks total of 238 billion, which again, this is much worse than the, the uh, 2008 collapse because it's already exceeding it, and these are just the first banks to fail. Cause me a little scoop of humble pie there. Oh, and if you notice too, these shit idiots um, who deliberately be shit idiots. I, I think you can pick up the microphone now. These are idiots that do not spend their time fixing their own shit society problems. These are shit idiots that thought there would be shit idiots around me. And then somehow I would take my time to fix their problems. This is why they are where they are. And like I said, they'll likely be poorer than Mexico in only a few short years. Probably less than five. Initially, much of that flow was driven by more attractive rates. But concern about the steadiness of some smaller lenders helped boost the trend this month. This is consistent with ongoing deposit flight from the banking system. As depositors indirectly invest their cash into government securities via money funds and shun bank credit, which is absolutely ridiculous. Because those funds, in a sense, their reserves are also the same toiletries. I said TD security strategist Janady Goldberg. This answers the question of where is the money going once it leaves the banking system. As a result, more cash may remain parked at the Fed's reverse repo facility amid a lack of short end supply due to ongoing T bill paydowns and federal home loan banks normalizing issuance. On Thursday, some 99 counterparties parked part 2.234 trillion at the reserve repo facility, down from 2.28 trillion prior to, you know, in the prior session, but decided 2023 highs. Get all that showing stresses in the banking system. And they've seen nothing yet. The banks haven't, you know, all failed yet. And eventually they all will. Finally, looking at our favorite chart showing total reserves versus U.S. market cap, it shows that with reserves rising at 3.425 trillion, the highest since April 22, U.S. stocks are now badly lagging with the amount of reserves would have them be. On the other hand, bank crisis needs to stabilize first. It will stabilize when all the deposits run. And while reserves are being furiously injected into the system, and I, I think he meant um, liquidity, because they don't have reserves. Money in the form of deposit runs needs to stop entering the reverse repo system, effectively sterilizing reserves. Because as the next chart shows, much of the increase in reserves has been offset by a surge in reserves repo. So again, all it's showing is stresses in the banking system. And, and this is the funniest part too. That's the people they can cry to about their economic problems who apparently can't maintain their own societies and will be absolutely starving by the end of this crisis. Just like the, uh, what was it, the, uh, what's, what's that one off the coast of uh, Sri Lanka? There you go. And these are absolutely the dumbest marching morons on earth. And you're shocked why this happens too. And it's just like what I was saying where uh, you see the times where it used to be, you know, run by people like Paul Craig Roberts and who, who was the National uh, Treasury Secretary? Though? I don't know. But the, uh, and then you see it now. But all that's showing is the 
banking system is failing and it's going to get much worse as the banks actually continue to fail. And again, just like if you pick that up, this imbecile society thought their geniuses would be spending time selling timeshares. This is why your banking system collapsed. And I was just saying too, about who you had running the treasury, I personally had volunteered to do so. And instead, now, you literally have failed third worlders. <laughs> Next to some lady completely, you know, probably completely senile at this point. And this, this is the result of this marching morons idiocracy. Exactly this right here. And again, also because they didn't donate. Make sure to uh, put some money in the Bitcoin wallet below. God's going to be very, very angry at you. 